Now, what about the ribs? The ribs, we got a nice rub we do on that. Brown sugar, garlic salt, seasoning salt, celery salt, a few other little things in there. I mean, rib pork can take sugar. Mm-hmm. Beef can't take sugar, as Why far as I'm concerned. I mean, I don't want no, I don't want no sweet beef. Okay. You know what I mean? I like some sweet pork and take sweet. So a lot of people put it. That's why their briskets get burnt. I just like keeping brisket salt and pepper. Brisket is a good cut of meat. So you should be able to make it stand out just with salt and pepper. And the garlic, salt and pepper, that's what we do. Okay. And you have that, that giant beef rib. Yeah, the, the dino rib. And the same. So we season that exactly the same way. As the brisket? Just with garlic, salt and pepper. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, while you're actually cooking the meat, you spray it with applesauce. On, on the, uh, 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 apple juice, apple, I mean. Apple juice. Apple on, juice, On the I pork. Mean. On the pork. And then we baste the beef. We okay. baste the beef like with a beef broth and uh-huh. uh, vinegar and Worcestershire stuff. So. Okay, so why apple juice? I mean, on the pork, just the sweetness. And okay. it just won't, but you, you can't, you gotta let it smoke for like two or three hours. And then you hit it. When that crust gets hard on it, if you hit it too quick, the seasoning gonna come up. Uh-huh. But pork can take sweet. So when you hit it with that sweet apple juice on that sugar, baby, it just it just solids it up and make it like a crust on it. And I've heard you say this in other interviews, like you don't try to create meat that falls off the bone. You, nah. you say when that happens, it's overcooked. Bite off the bone. Bite off the Bite bone. Off so, the so bone. explain explain the difference. Falling off the bone. If you pick up a rib, if you can't cut a rib and it's whole, it's overcooked. And overcooked, it's not going to be the same flavor. It's going to be steamed out and all that. You're supposed to be able to hold a rib. And I'm not talking about a competition rib. I'm talking about we call them retail ribs. Competition ribs still like a little tug. I don't want no tug on my ribs, but I want you to be able to bite that whole rib and it don't fall off the bone. So when I'm in Texas, I'm, I'm smoking out on the lake on acres of land. When I'm in LA, I got to smoke an alley. Cause what's an alley? Smokers, <laughs> right? So you know, <laughs> so show them what we got on here. Different man. kind of smokers though. Well, you <laughs> yeah, know. Different kind of smokers. <laughs> so we got ribs and our homemade chicken links on here, rib tips. Okay, so it's motorized and it's just rotating. Oh yeah, so it's a rotisserie, so the smoke just goes over it. Cause like I say, everything we do is slow and slow. Okay, and he's spraying it with apple juice. Apple juice, apple on juice. the pork. On the, that's the pork rib. If, right if he spray some apple juice on the beef, you know he gonna get fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what are these right here? So those are rib tips. So these are so rib, rib tips. So rib tips are, are, are like the bark off the top of the rib. The, um, like what they call it, the brisket bun. Okay. What do you prefer, the rib tips or the ribs? I prefer them both, but okay. I, I like the ribs. But the rib tips are, are you know, you go to Chicago, they're going to want rib tips. Aha. Uh-huh. You know? Okay. And so, over here is all the wood. So, so that's our wood. That's our post oak. So all different woods for different things. We got post oak. We got apple. We got pecan. So the, uh, the pork gets post oak, apple, and pecan. Aha. Uh-huh. The beef only gets uh, pecan and post oak. Got it. So these are our pork ribs. These ribs have been named the best ribs in the United States many times. And it's the same thing. Like, you can still pick this up, but this is our test. When you can do this and it comes, that's how you want it. You can still cut that rib. You see that? You see how you can hold it, but you can still pull that. Mm. So now if it was overcooked, you would pick it up and it would fall apart. Won't that look good? Delicious. I think you want to slap your mother-in-law, not your mama, your mother-in-law. <laughs> now, these guys do incredible work, man. Do you ever try to mess around like Beyond Meat or Impossible Burgers no, or anything else like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch none of that. No, I ain't. Uh, you know, it's so funny. They're like, oh, you need to get a vegan option. And I said, okay, when vegan restaurants get meat options, I will. Okay. What do you think about lab grown meat? You heard about that? Yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm old school. You You're know? not touching it. Like, like I, I want it, I want it out running wild. Okay, you know? straight out the animal. Straight out the animal, yeah. Okay, fair enough. How you like yours? Uh, and the same way you like yours. Yeah. <laughs> I eat meat. You know what I'm saying? I try to go vegetarian here and there, but I, I couldn't, well, couldn't you look keep good, it up. Though. Hey, you know. You know, I lost 300 pounds. I mean, 200 pounds. I lost like 25 pounds. You look good. Thank you. Thank you. I remember what I was telling you about? Look how beautiful that is. You remember I was telling you, like, right. you don't want it to fall off the bone? Right. But you, wanna, you wanna be able to do a clean bite like this? We'll try one. Yeah, yeah, try one. Okay. I haven't had these in a little while. So it's got the red from the... From the smoke ring. From the smoke ring, exactly. You got the bark from the rub. Right, right, right. And it was sprayed with apple juice. Yeah, you got the glisten from the apple juice that uh, uh, wakes up the bark. Mmm. Ain't that all right? Mmm. Anyway, it doesn't fall off the bone. Huh. But bite off the bone. But 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 it comes off the bone easy. Yeah. But it yeah. doesn't fall apart. It, does, it doesn't fall apart. So these are our rib tips. 
Delicious. And it's like we like to cut them like medallions like this. Okay. You can dip it. Or you can eat like you do. Do you taste it first? Make sure you got that smoke yeah. up in there. Okay. It tastes different than the ribs. Yeah. It's actually the top part off of bigger ribs. But that gristle and all that, that smoke gets in that gristle and all that, it's incredible. Mmm. Listen. I want people to come in, and I don't want one thing to stand out with everybody. Like, we can come in some night. Like, we do it. You, you got to come back for Oxtail night. Mm. We do a big thing in L.A. It's one of the biggest food I saw that in the, in, the, in the cookbook. Yeah. You got to come back for Oxtail night. It's huge. We do, I'm uh, a big Oxtail guy. I'm a big uh, Jamaican food guy. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. You know Rashid from my show? From no. the uh, showdown? Uh, that, no, uh, I, I haven't yeah. watched it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, I, I have a lot of guest chefs come in. We do curry, jerk, southern... Smother all kind of different oxtails. So how do oxtail you do night is one of the biggest nights in LA. How do you do your oxtail? I mean, it depends which ones. We smoke them if we doing smoked oxtail. I don't think I've ever had smoked oxtail. Yeah, we we smoke them if we doing jerk. All the one only ones that don't get smoked is the uh, sm the southern smothered oxtail, and we do those in gravy and we kick those low and slow. Okay. Yeah. Jamaican oxtail is completely smothered. In, in either jerk or curry. Like a brown gravy sauce. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. yeah. But, but see, we yeah, do I mean, the soul like, food. Yeah, yeah. The soul foods we doing is a brown gravy sauce. Right. Those are the ones that ain't smoked. But all the rest of them are smoked with pimento wood. We do, like I say, we do a curry, we do a jerk, we do a straight up barbecue one. That's incredible. Oxtail night is becoming one of the biggest food nights in LA. In LA. And we do it right here. Okay. In August. Aha. Uh -huh. And you will be my special guest that night. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. I remember um, like when I first moved to New York, my first regular gig was in a Jamaican restaurant called Negril Village. Okay. I used to go there I think, every Wednesday. And you know, I was broke at the time, so they would let me eat whatever I wanted yeah. in the kitchen. And you know, when you're broke, you don't have a lot of money, you don't really want to experiment, you probably wouldn't try oxtail. Yeah. You know, when your money's low because you haven't tried it yet. Yeah. But being back there, I can just have whatever I want. I started eating oxtail and I'm like, oh, this is... The best thing ever. Yeah, oxtails are amazing. Oxtails are. I mean, I never I've, seen an ox, but they're amazing. I always wonder if it came in a tube or something like Man. that. <laughs> so you doing that, and like I said, I remember in college, and I would say, uh, DJing for uh, thirty dollars and a four-piece chicken dinner from a uh, uh, Williams Chicken. Mm. You know. And it wasn't even about the money; it was just about the experience. You know. Yep. What was your, your DJ Vlad? That was your name. DJ Black. I was DJ exactly. Kid. Party didn't start till I walked in. There you go. Oh, yeah, man. I, I miss DJ, but Glad TV sort of took over. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. Do you still DJ at home, though, solo? I don't. I, I can't say I don't. I don't even have equipment anymore. Do you like music, though? I love music. But I like when you're at home, like, so I mean, my oldest told me one time, damn, Dad, when I was like deep before Blood Souls, when I was like deep into DJing, I wouldn't play music at home no more. Oh, really? No, I play and music then, all the time. Yeah, but I'm saying at the time, because I was doing it for a living. Yeah, you get a little burnt out sometimes. You get a little burnt, just a like cooking. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. like like my woman one time he said, when I first opened up Blood so damn, Dave, what I got to do to get a steak? But now I'm at that point that I'm so back deep in, I have over 10,000 uh, albums. Ooh. I'm so back deep into my music. Really? Just listening to it. You know, jazz, old school, yeah. you know. Uh, love it. But you, you get so far away from it, and then you realize how that was your escape. You know? Oh yeah, no, DJing in front of a, a large crowd, that's something that, that made me fall in love. Yeah, the first yeah. time I DJed and, and everyone's going, you put in that one record and everyone goes crazy, you're like, ah, oh, this is the most amazing feeling. I mean, I, I understand why so many people devote their lives to music. Yeah. Whether it's rapping, singing, or DJing. Yeah. It's all a very similar kind of thing. What was your party starter no matter what? Ooh, man, I did a lot of reggae. Okay, okay. I, I did a lot of like 90s reggae, mm. you know, um, you know, a lot of DMX up in here. Yeah. That's all, yeah. you oh, know, that's or, or, yeah. you know uh, Black Sheep, yeah. Choice is Yours, yeah. you know, like the big, the big records that gets everyone, everyone high. Mine was uh, Ain't No Future In Your Fern. Right. Uh, MC Breed, rest in else? peace. What else? Rest in peace. Uh, of course, No Vaseline. Oh, really? You, you know, play that? <laughs> uh, but I, you know, but it was so many ones that that was, you know, and I'm like you, like, we used to have little things. How long can you keep the party going before somebody leave the dance floor? Oh, really? You know. Oh, no. It's What's the longest stretch you had? Before anyone leave me? I mean, I, but I've DJed for eight hours straight. Yeah, yeah. I've done that. Yeah, that's incredible. I've, you know, it's funny how, like, you don't even want to go to the bathroom. It's yeah. like you're such in a zone. Yeah. 
you know, and you know, a lot of times when I was starting out, they would put you, you wouldn't be in the main room. You'd be in that side yeah, room. That's you'd side, be yeah, sitting there. Yeah. You know, only a couple of people on the dance floor, you'd have to sit there and meticulously try to get more and more people and then not play that wrong record where everyone just kind of clears out. So yeah, it's, it's a lot going on. I'm gonna have another rib. New York man, man, you at home, man. These ribs. This Sunday dinner, baby. Are that good? And look how beautiful it is. Look how red it is on the side. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Mmm. Some of the best ones I've ever had. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Appreciate that. And the crust. And yeah, you see that bark. That's what that's what it does. That's why we walked you step by step with it. Mm. And you see you biting it. It's tender to the bite, not fall off the bone. Right. Fall off the bone, get the pit master sent home. Right, because that, that's how people try to advertise their ribs a lot of times. The, the fall off the bone yeah, with meat. That's, that's but crazy. You, don't, you don't do that. No, you're right. If it, it fall it, off it, the bone, it's, it's overcooked. Mm. Incredible ribs.